This video is about how to use a purchase agreement in the purchase order process. I recommend that you have seen the video how to create, update and follow up on a purchase agreement. Inga the purchasing manager has just entered a purchase agreement into Microsoft Dynamics X 2012. The purchase agreement is based on an agreement with one of her suppliers and the commitment that she made was to buy the product satellite speaker model 0 for 5000 US dollars maximum over the next 6 months and then she will get 10% discount another commitment was that she should buy car audio systems model 02 of 2000 pieces or above over the next 8 months for a unit price of 100 US dollars We can find the purchase agreement that Inca entered into the system under Procurement Sourcing, Purchase Orders, Purchase Agreement, and in the list page we'll find the agreement. And in the line section of the detail page you can see two commitments she entered. The first one is for Satellite Speaker Model. 01 where there's a net amount of 5000 US dollars discount percent of 10 expiration date in 6 months and car audio system model 02 quantity of 2000 discount percent 0 unit price of 100 and it expires in 8 months Now we want to create a purchase order, so we go to the, the vendors and find our vendor. And create a purchase order. As there are an effective purchase agreement, you'll be asked to select the purchase agreement that should be used by the purchase order. So if you're going to use a purchase agreement, then you'll select one. And we have actually two effective here, and I'll take the one with the electronics. And I'll use that on the new purchase order that I'm creating. If you go to the header view, you can see that um, one of the information that we specified on the header of the agreement, the terms of payment, has been defaulted to this purchase agreement. This will deviate from standard defaulting from the vendor. Well, we can start adding lines for the product we had an agreement on. So one of them was the satellite speaker model 01 where we will purchase a quantity of 20 and you get the unit standard unit price from the system but in this case 10% is applied and that is coming from the agreement from the update line you can see which agreements it's attached to and what discount percentage it gives If we add a new line for the other product we had an agreement on, then you can see that the unit price is defaulted to 100, the quantity is defaulted to 100 as well, but that has nothing to do with the agreement, this is a standard quantity, so I only want to buy 50 the unit price is 100. Now the two lines on the purchase order is related to each their commitment on the purchase agreement that is tied to the purchase order. However it is possible to add a new line on the purchase order which is not related to that agreement. So in that way the lines can be mixed. In order to use those commitments 
it's vital that the delivery date is within the valid period of the commitment defined on the purchase agreement. From the purchase order, we can go to the agreement and track the purchase. So on the general tab, purchase agreement, it will take us to the actual purchase agreement and we'll see the two commitments here. Going to the line details to the fulfillment tab, you can see that there is a remaining of 4,533.44, which is less than the 5,000 we started with. And released, we have 466.56, and that corresponds to what the net amount is on the purchase order. In the same way, we can see for the other commitment that we have 1,950 remaining out of the 2,000, and now it's quantity, and we have released the 50 of the quantity. When I receive the goods by registering the product received, then the respective amount or quantity will move to the received field. And when the purchase order is invoiced, then the amount or quantity will move to the invoiced field. In this way, you can track how far the goods are in the process. From each commitment, it's possible to look up related information, the least order lines, and then see the order lines that's actually utilizing the commitment. Or on the overall level, where all the order lines using all commitments on that purchase agreement is listed. Now this was how to use the agreement when creating purchase order manually. In various scenarios where the purchase order is created automatically, there is also possible to use the agreement. A good example is firming a planned order. When the MRP has generated planned order and these are being firmed, the purchase order is generated. We would like that this new purchase order actually uses the agreement. Let's go to the planned purchase orders. Procurement sourcing, common purchase orders, planned purchase orders. I have a planned purchase order here, generated for this purpose. If the product, quantity or amount, and the delivery date in the planned order are covered by any commitments in a purchase agreement, then the system will generate the new purchase order so it uses the agreement. It requires that the master planning parameters are configured to search for agreement though. So, this planned purchase order is for item number car audio system model 01 and there's a requirement for 50, quantity of 50. The delivery date is within the value period and the vendor is the vendor we have on the purchase agreement. So, let's firm this one. And go to purchase orders to see if we have a new purchase order has been generated. And it has. We have a new purchase order here. We can check whether there's a purchase agreement. And if you select the commitment we expect that we have used, go to the fulfillment and see that now hundreds are released, meaning the two purchase orders we made for 50 each. The latest one with the planned orders. And the related information can show us which order lines we have. So we have two of these 50 where one of them is from the firming up the planned order. This ends the presentation of how to use a purchase agreement in the purchase order process.